this was actually my story um, with my with her and her mum, and she really felt it. Um, and so I think in those moments, you feel like the work is kind of done, that it speaks to people in ways that they feel like that perhaps it's not seen. It's all the way from, you know, uh, casting to editing to shooting. Do you have your hand in all of it or are you just the all seeing eye? kind of with docs it's hard not to be involved in like every single part of it um uh yeah I kind of um I like did like the sort of initial like casting interviews and then like um sort of storyboarded it kind of loosely scripted it and then uh pretty much the only thing I didn't do is shoot it um uh, that was May my DP um uh but yeah, I got I was able to be involved in like the whole process through the edit and everything, which was amazing, Even, especially because it was through COVID um, and like none of us could be in the same room. Um, so, yeah, I kind of was a bit of a control freak about it. We didn't have a, a budget for the Welshman, so it's filmed on zero. Um, so a shot by me edited and uh, directed, obviously, and produced by my partner. We only had, I think, five crew. Um, so I had two <clears throat> brilliant uh, landscape photographers who are friends of mine uh, come out for a day with me and we did some drone shots and stuff like that. And then uh, David Railton, who did the soundtrack. So he's another member of the crew. And suddenly with I Choose and this type of um, visual style um, to tell Rufy's story, Tina and Alice, I was wondering if you'd talk about the decision to use this type of filmmaking style and how that changed your approach um, and preparation and the narrative and then the filming of the film. I've always been quite drawn to image and it usually starts off with an image and how that can kind of expand out. So yeah, I think I, I've got quite a particular visual sensibility that I'm attracted to. Similarly, the colour palette was inspired by um, an image, a photograph by a guy called Ragbir Singh. Um, and it was the colour palette within that that really then kind of tonally was um, kind of utilised throughout with like the costume designers and the production designer. And then when we then went into the grade as well. I was wondering if you had any preconceptions about how audiences might receive your films and if they've been any different or are you totally in line with what you think it's always really nice when you know somebody you don't know reaches out to say that they resonated with it in some way and there was a um a beautiful young woman messaged me on instagram actually and said and you know this was actually my story um with my with her and her mum and she really felt it um and so i think in those moments you feel like the work is kind of done that it speaks to people in ways that they feel like that perhaps it's not seen. I think particularly within the gaze of like feminism and what that means and the way that often a certain type of feminism is upheld as being kind of, you know, radical. When actually I think um, women of a certain class positionality are often kind of not visibilized in certain ways. Uh, but I think I kind of thought people would just think it was funny because I tried to put as much like humor into it as possible. So then to see loads of people talking about how like they related to it and like it reminded them of, like their dads and things like that and like um yeah it was like I'm not a surprise I guess but like it was really nice because you kind of watch things so many times in the edit that you kind of forget that it's actually quite emotional um <laughs> what you're talking about so yeah Alice perhaps you've got some air insight through pitching I know it's sometimes quite a, a stilted thing to discuss but any help that we can give the audience would be great um I guess um I, I do quite a lot of pitching um generally because I work in development um so I guess like I think the thing people kind of um the biggest like mistake people make when they're pitching is like acting like they don't even like their idea <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense um but I feel like people can become really like um self-conscious about their work and their concept and stuff when they're pitching it because it is really scary um uh and um I, I find that like the biggest thing I can do that helps me is just like go in with like a, a very like 
overly self-confident fake it till you make it attitude of like this is the best thing that's ever been thought of um and if you don't make it you're stupid um and that's kind of my attitude <laughs> towards pitching I didn't, that's probably not the most concrete advice I could offer but it does work I swear I always try and answer like three questions all the way through the pitch which is like like why this as in like why this project why this approach uh uh why now like why filmmaking wise why you're making it now why the current zeitgeist all these kind of things and also why me like what is your relationship between uh these other two questions and i just try and think of those things constantly um in my answers to stuff um also in my presentation of the project um must be my approach i think ideas wise i think it's important to um to not i think film school especially put a lot of pressure on um boxing you in and maybe meeting deadlines which is good in some ways but in other ways it's like um i think it's really important to be your authentic self when it comes to ideas and and, and like um Rhea said that um why you why why are you the person to tell this story that kind of attitude and um you know you only you have this certain perspective on it and only you can tell it in this way and are you the right person for that so ideas wise is just um yeah be authentic to who you are you know um pitching wise i can't really comment and i loved all those comments especially alice's um <laughs> about being just yeah overly self-confident and just putting yourself out there is is it's hard for artists but it's really important so how do you get um visibility for your film and people to watch your film once it's out there it's quite tricky because um you obviously want to send your film to festivals and these kind of things and get them shown but you can't really do that if you've already put it online so there's a trade-off whether you want to just get it out there on vimeo and start sharing it or if you want to kind of sit with this thing for two years that then goes around to festivals and you get kind of like a buildup of prestige but maybe not actually that many people are seeing it whereas if you shared it originally online and pushed in a different way of social media actually more people might end up seeing it so i think it's a bit of a trade-off something i didn't ever think about to get a short shown was sort of local cinemas and art and art centers um and the reaction to just asking you know do you want to show this film was so positive every, every art center was like i mean i know it helps with the welshman it's been shown locally in wales and it's a story that you know is part of our history um but even that even some of the art centers were like you know yeah we should, yeah we would love to show short films you know anything you've got any anybody that you know that might be making one let us know you know and they're quite um they're quite keen to see to see more of that and that's not something i ever ever thought you know would, would be sort of possible so if you could give advice to uh, fresh little baby filmmakers what would you say find ways to enjoy the process of it because the product is very you, know, you don't make that much stuff very often you know and i think you've got to really not be too product conscious and just get on with the work really and just keep yeah and be hard on yourself at a certain point in order to improve but not you know just as you know lizzie says be uh, persistent and yeah enjoy what you're doing at least because it, not much of it is rewards you know a lot of it is you know pretty brutal hard graft just being persistent and not being um sort of uh scared if you're if your film doesn't land the first time around or um like we said earlier getting you make you might make a bunch of films and none of them are particularly very good but it's all about sharpening your kind of tool and maybe sort of five ten years in whatever it takes you'll have kind of really kind of mastered that the craft of of it um and then in the in the process of doing that meeting um other people in production and um so yeah it's all it's like a stepping stone from make make one film and something else will come from it and then it just kind of goes on and on and on so just be persistent even if you don't think it's very good or people don't particularly like it it doesn't you know it's all part of um learning how to make films and get get into the industry but I'm going to say you should be really egotistical um, because uh, it took me a really long time to like learn how to like back myself. Um, and uh, I think once I did, it started like if everything just got way easier because you can just say what you think and do what you want to do to a degree. Um, and um, yeah, I think just if you're like just starting out in the industry and you're like in the room, like it doesn't really matter if you aren't speaking up um and it is like really difficult <laughs> um but um yeah just like backing yourself and um thinking your ideas are quality um is 
is pretty good, good thing to do. <laughs>